Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Welcome back to Multicultural TV Talk, a Media Village podcast where we bring you interviews with talent and creatives from across entertainment, discovering their stories and how they are changing the face of stardom across media. As always, I am your host, Juan Ayala. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, let's get to talking. In honor of Women's History Month, we are joined by four of the stars of the CW series Kung Fu for a special roundtable discussion. Please welcome to the show Vanessa Kai, Shannon Dang, Olivia Liang, and Yvonne Chapman. Thank you so, so much for being here. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So um, Eddie Liu was actually one of our first guests on the show um, back in uh, 2021 when we first started this podcast. And uh, I recall that he was uh, talking about how you were off filming the pilot right before COVID lockdowns. You didn't get to finish, unfortunately, but here we are three years later, um, almost to the day of when those lockdowns happened, if you can believe it. Oh my yes. gosh, it yeah. Right mid-March. Oh my Friday the 13th. March, yeah. It was Friday, it March was Friday the 13th. I shut down. I will never forget. And today was the day that we all came back to, or we all like dispersed and we were like, okay, See you in two yeah. weeks. Not see you in two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. Not, yeah. We really Martin thought. Hero was like, it's just going to be a couple weeks. We'll yeah. be back up in production yeah. in no time. And then uh, seven months later, we went back. Yeah. Gosh. So I'm curious, you know, it's been, again, three seasons and you just all had your finale. So again, huge congratulations on such a fantastic run so far. Um, and I'd love to hear from each of you, what would you say is the biggest lesson that each of you has learned as an actor throughout this three season process? Shall I? <laughs> Go for it. Start. Start. Go okay. for it. Shoot, shoot, it's, shoot. The, it's the first thing that came to mind. It's not a new lesson, but it is a reinforced lesson that uh, the, that the actors are like just one piece of the puzzle. We are mm. not that important <laughs> uh, to the 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 final product like so much work goes into making a, a tv show or a movie there are so many important integral people who are behind the camera who make us look good um and we our jobs just wouldn't be possible without them and so like we are just one piece of this puzzle and we are I, I, and I do not think that we are the most important piece, but um, yeah, that was very much reinforced um, throughout these last three seasons. And um, yeah, I'm very appreciative of our, of our crew and everyone else who makes the show happen. I would actually love to piggyback on that because um, Liv, as you mentioned, like there's so many moving parts, there's so many people. And I think what struck for me to that question is um, what's the biggest lesson? I, it's probably flexibility because there's so many moving parts and things and um, and everything happens so fast and um, to remain flexible with scheduling with um, uh, to have a the pro uh, flexibility and process flexibility of knowing that um, that the thing that you prepared isn't going to go that way that day and you have to just roll with what's happening in that day um, yeah um and just say oh the scene is now moved or we have to so forth and so on the some lighting is not working or so and so uh, yeah and um i think that has been like a huge lesson is um flexibility and stamina those long days yeah i mean yeah. i would say this this isn't so much a lesson but a gift that the show has really had over the three seasons and it's the camaraderie and collaborative spirit of the entire cast and crew um, with everybody coming together and being who they are and being able to be kind to each other is a huge, huge gift for an actor. It makes our job so much easier. And it's just a really sentiment to the cast and the crew that we've been able to have and carry that attitude throughout three seasons and really come out, you know, loving each other and caring for each other. That really helped with the creative process. So I, throughout those three seasons, that is my biggest gift and takeaway from it as opposed to a lesson, it, it is a lesson going forward that that's just what I hope that we can continue to create no matter what happens with the show, if it's on the mm -hmm. show or on separate projects, whatever may happen. Um, I'm just really grateful that I've got to work with these people. I think, um, well, there's so many lessons and I loved all of your guys' lessons and reinforcements that you guys said, but I think to piggyback on, I guess, all of them, um, I would say that 
in the importance of like environment and camaraderie, I realize, I think it starts, we, throughout the seasons, we've had so many um, casting, I mean, crew that would tell us and even visiting casts and say like, it's so great to work on your guys' set. Nurses would come in for the day and the COVID nurses and they'd be like, oh, I've been wanting to get on to Kung Fu uh, all season. I hear you guys are the nicest and welcoming. And I think it starts from the top down because you forget that we uh, set the tone. And I think Liv as our leader and number one has been so great at helping um, set a great work environment and tone. And that allows the cast to follow as well, because, you know, no one needs some grumpy actors. And then everyone on the cast, I mean, and crew is just walking on eggshells. So I think we really have made a fun, work welcoming, warm environment. And I think uh, that's the biggest takeaway of like, what we can do moving forward on whatever projects we may lead. I, I hope to always bring that with me wherever. I feel like you just sort of at the end of the day, um, sometimes in show business, we forget it's a workplace and you want to yes. have that level of camaraderie and community and all of that. And especially, you know, very few other jobs are you working 12 to 16 hour days and overnights and things like that. You've got your set hours, but with, with in, in show business, you have these crazy schedules that are all over the place and, you want that sense of like, can't wait to go to work with this amazing group of people mm -hmm. versus like, mm -hmm. ugh, another day yes. <laughs> on, on the yeah. set, you know? I would also love to to add to that is just the, the, the attitude of also the attitude of gratitude. You know, it's like, we don't take anything for granted so that we can show up and say, you know, we do have, we are so fortunate. We have one of the best jobs in the world and we're so lucky that we have each other. So, um, there's no reason to show up with something with less than a positive attitude, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, that's, and I just want to add to that. I'm so grateful. And uh, we mentioned your showrunner, uh, Christina uh, M. Kim, who has done such a phenomenal job, you know, writing all of your characters and such empowered and strong women. So I'm curious if there were any women from your own lives that you drew some inspiration from, um, as you were developing the characters or um, maybe some of your fellow actors that you grew up watching? I feel like there's so much inspiration out there. Liv and I were just uh, uh, conversing on another interview about how much the Disney Channel has inspired mm -hmm. us and uh, the female actors on, uh, you know, uh, watching Grow Up. Um, I think there's been lots of examples of that. I know uh, I also pay tribute and always am inspired by my mom who always encouraged my love for the arts and uh she worked a lot so I, seeing her always like hustle and 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 grind and be productive I guess like I was always like okay if I you know a goal hustle keep working I don't know that's definitely contributed uh but I think working with my all of these ladies here and plus Kang who's not in the square right now but um in <laughs> me every day I seriously we kind of joke about this but the women carry it down for our show like everyone is so like ever right okay like every, no shade just, to the men but no like, shade the to women men. we are but, all we are all like so <laughs> women on the show like as as human beings and we're also all kind of playing alpha female characters um and then these we've just got a lot of like male wives on the show <laughs> yeah. happy to be just here a bunch of little, just a little beta boys <laughs> yeah oh my goodness um I yeah. when um I guess in terms of developing the character there um Christina wrote very poignantly like a very Asian American female experience so it was kind of all on the page for me um I've said it before but like reading the pilot I was like oh I'm just I'm Nikki like I had a tiger mom who wanted me to be a genius like I took abacus lessons that's crazy and <laughs> and so like I very much resonated with everything that was on the page and so um but I guess uh you know I I was able to draw from my own life to um and be inspired by my mom and you know like it, it was, it, it wasn't a, a a major like dive into character development. It was just like there and like mm -hmm. within me as well. Can you still use the abacus? 
girl, girl I never learned. I was pretending the whole time. <laughs> I was like, I love it. We were in, we were in, <laughs> I don't know where my mom even found this thing. I'm sure she just heard someone at church say like my child's learning the abacus. And my mom was like, well, my child's going to learn the abacus. We were in a garage and there was just like 20 <laughs> Chinese children in this what? garage, like with abacuses. And they would put what? like math questions in front of us. And I was just doing mental math. And I was like looking around and I was just like moving my fingers around, trying to make it look like I was using that because I literally <laughs> never learned. Oh I was like, what? I was like, have you heard of a TI-89 calculator? Because I will be using that. I do not need long, an abacus. How long was this a class? Summer. I love it. Oh my gosh. The whole summer. For a summer, like an hour okay. and a half every Saturday or something. Wow. You kept that. You kept that that lie strong. You kept that lie yeah. strong. Up until... The greatest role. Yes, that was that's the right. acting training right there. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Love it. <laughs> you know, I I kind of did a, a a dive of like who are um, great teachers, great role models. Um, I know that she's that she has been blown up quite some time, and I'm not saying because she just won an Oscar, but like. Michelle Yeoh, of course, um, when I think about her, yes, all the flowers, all the flowers. Um, because when I, I, there's so few female roles that are already like, or female characters or who are portrayed either in film and or first certainly like um, Asian or Asian Amer uh, presenting who um, play these characters of teacher, uh, on the level of to the degree of, of the roles that she plays mm -hmm. um warriors and and guiders and um and so she has been and but i i also think so she has certainly infused like i i watch her with such grace and and um and patience that she has and, and that she infused in her roles but and i when i think about the women in my life i really think about the tenacity of my of my aunt, for example, and my great grandmother. Um, so yeah, uh, my aunt, like in a poor village in in China, like just marries a stranger, comes over, and you know, it's like the immigrant story of like, what does that mean to like hold it down that way? And um, having eleven relatives like living in a two-bedroom apartment or like my great-grandmother who like was a young widow and she had her feet were bound and so she came over because of my aunt um was able to sponsor people and um and I what is it like for these women and so when I think about playing Kay Ling and how is that infused in this character of who is she and um for the people that she wants to um, hopefully teach, impact, I don't know. Um, those are the those are the kind of role models that that sort of like inspire me. So I was thinking about. Um, for me, I wouldn't say it's anything in particular about the creation of Jalan, but look, I'm just always trying to make the women in my life and the people that I love proud. So it was coming out the work with that in mind and just wanting them to, to see what's happening and, and to love it. And, um, you know, I'm really lucky, like throughout this whole, you know, audition journey, as we all know, we audition way more than we actually work. I have a few girlfriends of mine who look like me. We see each other all the time in the audition room, but it was such a lovely community because we help each other with our auditions. And this was including one of them. You know, I had girlfriends who were like, oh, this would be fun if you did this and that. And like, we're always bouncing each other, like bouncing ideas off of each other. And it's been creating that community aspect and, and creation of that work that I really enjoyed. So whether it's, you know, for Jalan or not, it was it was that kind of collaborative um, environment that I really loved with with my fellow women actors. And I just hope that they're they're proud of what it what it came out to be. <laughs> I'm we're sure proud. they are. <laughs> No, thanks. We're proud. And uh, Olivia, since you've been leading this cast um, for three seasons now, what would you say is maybe one of the most eye-opening moments um, that you've had in playing your character? Oh, in playing my character. Um, <laughs> I, I said this in an interview with Shannon and uh, maybe she'll, um, <laughs> she will rebuttal again like she did. But I, <laughs> Nikki's a way better person than I am. 
<laughs> um, that was, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it's been very, um, fulfilling to play, um, such a, a strong willed and, uh, like justice driven person. Um, and uh, playing Nikki has inspired me to be, you know, more vocal and stand up for the things that I believe in and be less, um, people pleasing. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot about myself. Um, but I think probably the most tangible, like eye opening thing for me is that it's possible to lead something. Um, I, I really was, I truly like when I started acting thought that I would get to I thought it would take 10 years to like book a commercial and then I was like very ready to play the leads best friend or like the therapist in the movie or or something like smaller or more like for um, comedic relief or comic relief so um yeah getting to play Nikki has just expanded my dreams um and made me think that more things are possible and then tack that on to our very successful Oscars weekend. Um, like the dreams just keep getting bigger. Um, yeah. And uh, Shannon, so we had you and Yvonne on our show last year. Uh, and I remember you talking about how Althea is so unapologetically herself and, and you know, is, is a role model, honestly, for a lot of young women, because you see this character, um, you don't see a lot of women working in STEM on television. These are usually roles that go to men. Um, so I'm curious, what would you say you're hoping that audiences take away from the show overall and from seeing you in this role? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, Liv, you are a good person. Nikki <laughs> might be saving the world, but you do good stuff too, okay? Don't put yourself so down. <laughs> um, second, I echo this. <laughs> secondly um yes I love that Althea is so unapologetically herself and something one of my favorite things that I love about playing Althea is how smart and brilliant she is and she's not afraid to hide it and I will admit as Shannon um Althea is a tech genius Shannon doesn't know anything about tech I don't know computers I don't know this please someone help me can you read my manual I just shun away from inner like everything is just I'm technologically impaired and <laughs> and she's so hacker 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 half the time I don't know what I'm even saying but I'm just like you know short-term memory or else but you are typing I, I'm like, I'm like, whole, tell it really soul. good Althea you're selling it, sister. sis. You are selling it real good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, sometimes I have post-its on the computer and I'm just like, yes, just tech warrior, fake it, whatever. Um, but I love that. And I hope, um, don't, uh, don't get me wrong. I do Google stuff and I have learned and taken away some of the uh, technical jargon, but she infuses, you know, her brain and her skills and she wants to help Nikki and her missions and help her family and save San Francisco. So something that I love um, about that is I hope that it inspires other people um, and especially uh, females who maybe didn't think about Stan, uh, maybe aren't always um, afraid to uh, put themselves out there um, and use, you know, uh, that those skills, I hope they feel inspired and want to pursue things and not be put into a box of like, you know, females have to be X, Y, Z or quiet or, you know, the assistant. No, they can full on force, take charge, be smart unapologetically. And yeah, I hope, I hope she inspires people. Yvonne with, uh, with your character with um, Jelan, it's always refreshing to see a villain who, um, has depth and complexity and it's not just evil for the sake of being evil, like, you know, an old school Bond villain. So um, I'm curious, what would you say is an eye-opening moment you had playing Jalen? Oh, an eye-opening moment I had. I, I think, you know, in the transition that she's had in the three seasons, um, I, I've really come to love her vulnerability because we didn't see a lot of that in the first season. Um, and I love that she had such a propensity and capacity for change, which I think and I hope is a lesson that could come out of that. It's just no matter your circumstances, no matter where you are, that you do have the capability um, for change if you want it. And that was a that was a lesson for me and looking at that and seeing that 
no matter her circumstances, like this is a girl that came out fighting no matter what and trying to be a better person. And, you know, she's someone who has a seat at the table, no matter her circumstances too. Like she's always, she's someone who has this, um, <laughs> sometimes a little bit too much, but I really like her bluntness <laughs> and her honesty. And that's something that I really want from her too, is that sometimes you, you, just, you get to the verb, you just got to say and do what you need to do. And uh, that's been really difficult for me and my and personally for me, but that's something that I've really learned from her as well is to have a little bit more of that because sometimes we need that to to get, you know, where we want for, for ourselves and for other people. And Vanessa, with the career you've had and um, with all this experience that you've sort of um, amounted during your career, I'm curious, what, what do you say is the biggest change that you've noticed in the industry since you first got started as an actor? Oh, Oh, it's really funny. I was um, at an event last night. I was having this discussion with another um, Asian American woman and um, about this and what it was like when I started. And now I remember when I started, the struggle I had to try to find a good monologue mm -hmm. because there were no plays or any characters that were like reflective of like the thing that I, that I felt that I could, I could present that I could do um what it is now is I am oh my gosh I'm so excited by just how the the diversity the diversity that I see on television um on stage um I am so uh, and uh be it um race or um LGBTQ a plus and um I um yeah, I think that that has been that's the the biggest change that um that truly excites me. I that storytelling doesn't have to be linear. That um that um that I think that those are the big the biggest takeaways. I um those are the biggest takeaways because and they and the the answer it feels so short and so simple, but like it's so it's so big. It is so big. Whether it's like um whether it was our show or um Liv, what was that that your friend was on like partner track and then or whether that was um or everything everywhere or and again like just a version of like whether it's our show or everything everywhere all at once it's like these the ways of telling story doesn't have to be like singular there's so many uh, branches of way of, of of how to to tell a story and, and multi-faceted of, of of universe or characters and storylines um, and people, the amount of actors that, um, guest actors that, um, have come through and, and just, um, an opportunity to offer them everyone else an, opp an opportunity to, to showcase their talent. I think that's been really great. And, um, speaking of everything, everywhere, all at once, as we said, it just swept up the Oscars. And, um, while we've seen such an increase in representation over the last, um, five or so years, we all know that there's still a long way to go. Um, and so I'm curious what each of you would say is something that needs to change within the entertainment industry in order for that needle to continue moving in the right direction. I think it's um, uh, like behind the scenes, like producers, um, directors, putting more people of color behind the camera um, and in decision making positions like there's only so much that we can do we, we represent because we look like this you know um, when I, I can't speak for all of us I, I think we all became actors because we like acting not because we felt like we need to represent something um, and it just so happens that because we look the way that we do we're tasked with representation which sometimes feels uh, very heavy and very pressureful um, but the more like the fact that we have a Korean American showrunner um, and the fact that it did not say Mandarin Cantonese martial arts experience required in the audition breakdown because she knows that not every single Asian person knows those things that mm -hmm. to me is representation um, and and th those are the, the changes happening behind the camera and in decision-making positions that will push our stories forward. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I I certainly don't want to be in the, I'm not gonna say no, but I don't want to just be in the Asian projects. Um, 
for the rest of my career because then I think that completely defeats the purpose of mm -hmm. representation and inclusivity. Um, we're just existing. We're just here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, more execs, more people in position of power who can green light stories, who can think outside of the box and see um, a story come in from uh, from a writer and be like, I know it says that this person is, is described as, um, you know, straight white male, but what if, what if he's not a straight white male, you know, mm -hmm. um, and who just people with creativity um, in decision-making positions, um, people of color are there, but yeah, I mean, um, like, I, I don't know, I have to wait for somebody to say yes to me, you know, um, as an actor. Um, so, so yeah, I, that's, those are my two cents. That was a long-winded answer. I think something that also helps is um, to piggyback off what Liv was saying is people write what they know. And so if there is more like, I know sometimes the arts feel like they're dying, especially in the school system. But I feel like if more children, especially, you know, kids of color and all ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds were to have that exposure and more programs uh, where uh, this can be a viable source for a career and where parents start to open up their ideas of you don't have to be a doctor, a lawyer, uh, mm -hmm. something in that corporate world that creative arts are more nurtured. I think that would definitely help because that's like our future generation of writers, everything behind the scenes. And so like us actors can only do so much and we already like passed that school level. So I think if I had, I mean, my parents were very encouraging, but I, I, I can only assume, I think parents, especially after Oscars and seeing all of this, you know, um, possibilities, I think more parental generations are gonna be open with their um with their kids and pursuing other avenues so I think that's going to help a lot with diversity I would also mm -hmm. say too that in order to create any kind of meaningful or significant change consistency has to be there this can't be a moment this can't be like a one-time thing where it's like great we had our moment and then we die off um I don't know how many years I can't remember the exact how how long it was from Joy Luck Club to Crazy Rich Asians getting getting oh. um, nominated it was like what 20 years like that can't happen we need to have a consistent voice a consistent presence within the industry because you know what Shannon's saying what you write is what you know what you see is what you know and we have to be uh, we have to be seen consistently in order for that change to actually be real and to stay there um my friends are so um well-spoken and articulate and so darn gosh darn smart I I can't add <laughs> I have nothing to add <laughs> I have absolutely nothing to add. Everyone, everyone, everyone said it all. Um, yeah, just behind the behind the camera, more execs, more writers, um, creators. Um, exactly what Shannon said. Um, uh, encouragement, um, opportunities, um, institutions or like programs that encourage and foster this kind of creativity for um, children of color um, and all backgrounds um, in all schools. Um, yeah all of it and consistency my friends are so smart thanks guys i think something that um similarly so similarly to what you all said um is studios willing to and i hate calling it a risk because there is no risk in telling our stories <clears throat> but for studios to be willing to take the risk because <clears throat> you know they made um everything ever all at once for i think 20 million and it ended up getting five times that at the box office and I think they, you know, A24, they're smart. They know what they're doing. So I don't think they even looked at it as a risk. They saw that they have this great, not to say 20 million is a low, bu low budget, but a lower budget sci-fi action film like that. And to be able to bring it to the masses in the way that it has. And as we said, sweep everywhere. And it was so great seeing all of these impassioned speeches at the Oscars and everyone thinking their ancestors and their families and their immigrant parents. My parents are immigrants from Central America and just being able to relate to, you know, th people think that these very specific stories of an Asian American family and a daughter who is struggling with her coming out to her mother and accept being accepted by her grandfather and all of that, it's so universal. And it's more universal than people think, you know? 
Juan, if I, if I, um, yeah, you spark that. Um, I think what that inspired me is to, it's yes to everything. And, um, for studio heads or people in positions of, of decision making, um, to recognize that these stories, that there, there's a hunger out there for the audiences do want to see stories do you want to experience do you want to see themselves um they are so young yeah, and and um and to give everyone give those stories the chance it doesn't have to be like this um cookie cutter box of like the the tried and true that we've all grown up with you know and like there's there's um much broader and expansive way of how to tell stories and um and and be inclusive whether you know such as stephanie shu's character coming out to you know a grandfather um and um i think that if people in decisions out realize that like yeah there's a there's a hunger out there and i think that's true yeah i'm gonna butcher um something that i heard john m chu say mm. but it was essentially like specificity creates universality so like the more specific we get with these stories um and tell it very authentically more people can can relate to it but if we're just trying to put diversity on screen to fill a quota or to like uh, for tokenism then it becomes just like an empty shell of a character but because um because like a movie like everything everywhere is so specific where they're um switching between english and mandarin like people in in bilingual households not even mandarin speaking ones but they recognize that too right like the specificity of adding that into the movie created a universality where people were able to recognize their own lives in this very specific life. I think that takes away a lot of the risk for studios too, because honestly, it's in those, like you said, Liv, in those specificities, the human nuances that creates a strong connection to bridge those gaps between no matter what you look like, that's something that people can relate to. And honestly, at this point, I think we've proven that we're not that much of a risk. <laughs> All studios well, are taking risks no matter what, right? It doesn't matter what projects they're taking on, but it's always a risk because you have no idea how people are going to respond. But, you know, true to what Liv just said, in, in those kind of stories and that kind of storytelling, that's where you can spark some magic. And I think everybody has a right to be invited into that process. Um, so hopefully we get to see more of that come because we got to just keep it up, you know? And uh, before we go, I hate to have to wrap this up, but we are getting close to our time. So uh, just our last question. We always ask our guests as we wrap up, uh, if you could go back and give your 13 year old self one piece of advice, we're going to wow. assume this does not mess up the timeline or anything like that. You know, all this, all this multiverse, <laughs> all these multiverse films, we're constantly thinking, oh, we're going to disrupt the timeline. But if you could go back and give your 13 year old self one piece of advice, what would you say? Um... I would probably say to my 13 year old Shannon self, um, to breathe, hmm. everything's gonna be okay, even better than you expect and have fun. Oh my God. That's exactly what I was, I was <laughs> like. I'd be like, girl, just chill out. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be fine. You're 13. You're, you're yeah. good. You'll figure it out. You might not figure it out for a while and that's okay. Life is messy. Life is complicated and it's supposed to be just taken in stride and, and you'll be fine. You got people luckily who love and support you and you're good. <laughs> Sorry to steal your answer, Shadow. It's, it's the universal thing well, that yeah. we it, only yes. all <laughs> your old need to hear. Yeah. Vanessa. Oh my God, I'm thinking, what would I tell? Um, just, um, it will come. Like the, the business will, will, there will be room. Don't you worry. Yeah. And um, have some fun, but there will be room. I think that that's the thing that I struggled with when I was like 13. Where's the room? Yeah. yeah yeah um I have two one mm. is from my therapist um it's not the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> like uh, big 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 feelings growing up and like anything could send me into a spiral and like so much anxiety but um it's not the end of the world 
life is meant to be enjoyed. Um, there, there is grief. Um, and then the second um, is, I think will resonate with a lot of, especially Asian kids, um, but comparison is the thief of joy because I grew up being compared to the kids who are smarter than me, who are doing better than me, um, always looking at someone else's successes and achievements and feeling like if they have it, then I can't. Um, and that I think was a very, it, it's, it, it, I don't think, I know it's a very unhealthy mindset, especially to go into a business like this, where you can't help but be surrounded by, I mean, that scene in La La Land where she's like surrounded by people who look a little bit like her, but maybe taller or thinner or like longer hair or whatever. Like you're just surrounded by the temptation to compare yourself to everybody else and and allow that to dictate the way that you feel about yourself. Um, and I know that that's something that I've been working on since I was young to, to try to undo. So I wish that someone had told me that when I was 13 so that I wouldn't still be learning these lessons today. But um, yeah, com it, it, there's no use in comparing yourself to others and just you do you girl. Mm. Also, Olivia, Yvonne, Shannon, and Vanessa, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And to everyone listening and watching, you can catch up on Kung Fu on the CW app, stream it there for free or on HBO Max. And of course, you can follow us at Media Village Com on Instagram. Head over to MediaVillage.com for all of our reviews, interviews, podcasts, and more. I'm Juan Yella. This is Multicultural TV Talk. Thanks for joining us.